So, oh man, this computer's hard drive started dying too. Uh, okay, so where is that? Get some already. No, okay, so this is the inner source stuff. Okay. Um, okay. So, where did that go? branch here. Give me the similarity. I was working on oh the no. I was working on clean ops. That's not right. What was I working on? Oh, this DF event refactor here. So I was working on this stuff to do, um, to add event types to the data flow um, code. So essentially, um, when you're running a data flow, you would get, um, you know, this is the standard. This is what you get right now. Let me just open this thing. Um, no, I didn't add the code, did I? Um, uh, let's see. Mm, let's see. Um, I don't know if this is really going to help this discussion, but uh, yeah, so I was working to add these event types. So essentially we would see, because, you know, right now we only get the results of the data flow when it's complete. Um, and it would be nice to be able to say, okay, we want to get uh, progress updates, basically, right? So like, hey, an, an input moved from one uh, operation to the next, right? Because for, for purposes of, for example, visualizing the data flow or, or tracking what's going on, you, you would want to know, you know, what's going on inside the data flow, not just whether it's done or not, right? Uh, so I was working on adding event types and sort of as as part of that work i was exploring i was playing with you know how we might implement a you know a more pythonic api around the data flows and i think the thing that i consistently keep running into is the the flow definition right and the way that we're linking together um, yeah, for example here, right, the way that we link together, this, this is just, this is just not ideal, you know, um, it's, 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 it, it accurately describes the flow, but it, it's not, it's not anything like anybody is used to, right, um, and that's our main issue with that stuff, and so I was thinking if we, if we made it fully Pythonic, you know, how do, how do you sort of bridge the gap, um, between the full, like the data flow and then a more familiar Python workflow. And essentially what I've come up with so far is sort of like, you know, you have your functions, right? Um, and let me just write some code. Uh, or where's this code? So you have your functions and, you know, these are our operations here and we, um, okay, here's your data flow, here's the event types. I'll put it up here with the functions. So essentially what this does is it takes some um, it takes inputs and so it takes this this carnivore function says um, uh, carnivore 
takes an integer value um, and then it returns a string of dead or beef um, and then this beef to feed this is just a very basic data flow so the beef to feed says basically just just as a replacement so that if you have 42 you end up with beef if you have beef you end up with feed and then the last one basically just says you know did, is 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 the string feed or is feed in the string right um so uh, this is true and this is false uh, that will just be false um, so that's essentially, you know, this will be our flow is our flow comes 42 beef, beef, feed, feed, true. And then otherwise, essentially we hit false. Um, so if greater than 42, greater than or equal to 42, we end up with true less than we end up with false. Um, and so thinking about, you know, the way that we might do this, I think, I think what we end up with is almost something that's kind of like, um, a, uh, uh, a, a, a sort of simplified, um, uh, let's see, it ends up being, so there's this concurrently function. Uh, have you seen that function? Let's see. No. Okay, so... Okay, so this thing is pretty dang handy. Um, no, is it not? Uh, is there no? There's no. There's no docs for it. Well, that's sad. Um, okay, let me just take us to the function. That's that's weird. Oops. Here, I'll just show the functions right here. All right, this concurrently. Okay, this thing needs to be documented. Um, and essentially, what it does is is it's this it's this loop where uh, where is. Okay, wait, there is git show. It becomes really obvious what it is with one of these things. Um, uh, it makes it really easy to do several things at the same time using the async IO APIs. It's a slight wrapper on top of that. Um, where is it's in this run run operation branch? Here's Johnny branches. Yeah. So run command. All right. So run command. All right, this is a pretty good. So let's just not look at the version that is all. All right. So essentially, what this does is, and here's the example. But basically, this is a wrapper around, you know, running a, you know, a, a subprocess run by using async IO. Uh, is this function here, and so, and it uses that concurrently function um, here, and so. Come on, let's see the whole thing. And there we go. All right, so, so the way that it ends up working is that you create this dictionary where you map these task objects to a, um, to a particular, it's basically like the task is the key and then the value is, you know, whatever you want it to be. But the task is sort of the unique object in this, right? Um, and so whenever, and it's the unique object because whenever it completes, um, it's going to be removed from this dictionary. Um, so, so you essentially end up with, with work is your dictionary of all the things that you're doing right now. Um, so if you were, you know, if you were 
executing, um, you know, a, a bunch of different operations concurrently, they would all be in this work structure. Um, and so, uh, and I think this is, might be what uh, the, I think this might be what the data flow stuff calls under the hood, or if not, it was sort of an abstraction that was written later. Um, so essentially, this is a this is how we can use that for uh, running a sub process and basically making it so that uh, we can add uh, we can we can add we can create a task for the read line function on both the standard out and standard error of a of a sub process, and that way. Um, so we say basically, you know, we create the task, we grab the read, we call the read line, we create the coroutine for the read line. Um, we create a task out of the coroutine, which is sort of as soon as you do create class, create task, it'll start running it in the background if there's a running loop, um, or at least it'll submit it to be run. And then you assign it to work, and we basically say, okay, so output would be standard out or standard error dot read line. So this one is wait, and this one is this is a task for when the process completes, uh, we'll get the result is, uh, or what is it? Oh, the event will be wait, and the result will be, you know, whatever the return code of proc.wait is, or whatever the return value of proc.wait is. Um, so this allows us to, because this is sort of a frequent problem if you're familiar with running sub-processes, is, okay, I would like to watch the output of the process, but I also need to, you know, uh, know if the process errored out, right? Yeah. Um, and so this solves that, this sort of solves that problem. And this is sort of my, this is one of my favorite uses of, of async IO is for this, because this is just like frequently a problem. Um, and so... Essentially, yeah, you end up with this 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 loop basically where you're like, okay, well, while you know, while I'm while I have work, be in the body of this loop, right? And when yeah. you break out of the loop, then cancel any work that remains. So, um, so what I'm thinking is, I mean, this is a very this is essentially what we do with the data flow, right? Is we basically say, you know, while I have operations to run you know, run them. And then yeah. in the body, we decide what more operations need to be run, right? Yeah. Um, and the logic, the logic that we decide which operations need to be run by is really, you know, the flow, right? That is our, the flow modifications that we're doing, um, you know, here, right? This is really, this turns into a bunch of essentially, you know, this stuff maps to what 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 if statements we would write, right? Yeah. Um, so I'm I'm thinking, you know, there's some kind of hybrid here where we could sort of define a uh, a way where you know we we sort of uh, offer up a pattern, you know, like uh, we offer up a pattern and then this can and, and a few helper functions, right? The help people write um you know maybe it's not a full data flow but it is this loop right um and if they're operating in this loop then they can easily transition from the loop based approach to a full data flow based approach right um yeah and and i'm not sure you know i i'm not i'm still this is the only thing that i've come up with so far uh but because I think it, it maintains our thing of like, you know, this this concurrent environment, right? Which I think is, that's, that I think is a very important thing. Uh, I know it's not something that people are always used to, but I think it, it becomes very important as start as you start doing network operations, right? And, and if you ever, the problem is if you ever break the async thing, now you're now you're sort of now you can't do this for example right as soon as you you write a non-async function and you need to call a sub process and watch its output and this is like basically it, it for me it basically always ends up being this this use case um, is why i end up returning to async io because i'm like okay well i need to you know write a bunch of code to do xyz and all of a sudden i'm like well you know there's this command line tool that fits really well into this portion of this or else i'd have to rewrite it and there's no good substitution in python right and so then you need to end up calling the sub process right and uh and so so you need there's some aspect of it where 
it's 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 good and maybe we can offer well we could also offer this for non async things and we could sort of just treat it like a work queue right if that helps ease people in and we could say hey here's your regular for loop now here's your async for loop now here's your full data flow right and we can sort of step yeah. them through the reasons why this is this is why you might do it this way this is why you might do it the async way and this is why you might do it the full data flow way right and here's the benefit that you get out of your you know each step that you take along that path yeah that makes sense that makes sense okay okay yeah. um all right so let me maybe write that down then okay um to do flow so, uh, improvements and then I think it becomes you know so uh, here's uh, standard um, you know pre-processing uh, no loop uh, loop based pre-processing uh, async loop uh, and then full data flow uh, uh, show how each way works. Each eBay corrected to each way works, and described benefits uh, uh, had by moving to the next way. Uh, uh, we could have demos for these as well. Yeah, demos for these definitely. Yeah, okay. Um, along with demos. So yeah, this would be docs and demos. Yeah. Docs and demos. Yeah, because uh, you know we have the. Um, we have. I think this this is the main part that needs to be flushed. Like we have a lot of good good stuff, and and you guys have all flushed out most of it. Right, and the data flows is something that's not really flushed out yet, right? And let's see, let's see, uh, tutorials, yeah, because the data flows is really just like you know using locks. Yeah, there's a few things that we've done, but it doesn't explain why. You know, it's sort of just like do it this way, and and then it's like, well, the question is, well, why the hell would I do it this way? You know, <laughs> why wouldn't I just write my normal stuff, right? And so I'm thinking, I think that if we have, yeah, I think, I think, uh, thanks for batting this around with me. Uh, I think, yeah, if we explain, you know, how how do we come, how how did we arrive at this at this conclusion that data flows are the way to go? Um, by walking people through their different options and and showing them, you know, this is what you get, and then once you get full data flow, then we need to start thinking about, um, you know, so this gives things like visibility, uh, uh, you know, modularity uh, in terms of the um, uh, merge data flow merge um, uh, modularity and maintainability. Um, and then um, also the uh, swapping out implementations. Yeah, okay. Um, uh, and then soon with the event types, we'll have the, you know, we'll be able to, I've got a guy at my work, we're going to work on, um, I'm going to do some of this event type stuff and he's doing another little project and we're going to get together and, and we're going to demo how you can see, you know, the inputs flowing through the network. Uh, uh, runtime. Diagram and soon runtime visibility. Um, flow visualization. Okay. Um, and then also patients and then also the uh, you know flow based program okay and then we have that guy that uh, saw Hill knows I can't remember his name um, who was looking at the UI Devesh okay cool yeah, I think that, you know, the data flow stuff is just really lacking right now um, in explanation. Um, yeah. Yeah. 
potential, but no, no execution right now. So, okay. So you're going to take a look at, um, you know, these, these existing things that you've been working on. Um, the tuner thing, the tuner thing definitely will want to do before, um, before we hit, um, you know, beta, because we'll want to make sure that that's one of those stable APIs, I think. Um, I think yeah, that should be a quick I'll, I'll have it done uh, by the next meeting. Cool. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and then what, do you have any ideas? We can probably wrap up here, but do you have any ideas for other tuners that might be good to implement? Because we could create some issues for people. Um, actually, I had some, but uh, uh, I can't really, uh, I don't have on top of my head. Okay. I can make you a list and uh, send it to you. Okay. Yeah, we could, we could always brainstorm next week, too. Okay. Or come up with offline uh, and or. So, yeah, so if um, you come up with any, just post them in Gitter. Okay, sure. Uh, I actually implemented uh, grid search, right? Mm -hmm. uh, there's one called grid, grid search CV. Okay. Uh, which is actually, um, which is actually, uh, you know, dividing the data and uh, making partitions and okay. all that. But uh, it was getting uh, complex for me, so I just yeah simple. Yeah, I think simple was the right way to go for that first one. I mean, I think it's it's also like a nice readable amount of code too, which is yeah. great for a first implementation. Grid search CV. Okay, so we've got grid search CV. All right, let's see. I wonder. Okay, cool, sweet. Anything else we should talk about today? Uh, that's it. Okay, cool. And then I've got, as far as also data flows go, so I'm hoping I'm doing some stuff. Um, I'm doing some stuff with my with with Intel, and we're trying to implement this. I don't know if you've you've I've I've sort of been quietly pushing some. Uh, where were they? Basically, this the the I've changed the the this there's a software portal demo. I took the software portal demo and I slightly refined it to this inner source portal. We're trying to do this inner source stuff in my work, which is basically like applying open source to internal development and sort of like saying everybody within the company should be able to see these things and then you know how does that work right and so we need to collect metrics on projects and uh, then we're going to be looking at you know maybe doing some similarity analysis across different projects um so we were uh, i i pitched that hey you know maybe we can use dffml for this so we're gonna we're trying to use dffml and and so hopefully this will um this will end up being um uh, this this is going to be a lot of data flow work going on here, so I'm hoping that we can use this to you know as a this will this will probably make, help help me flush out and I'll need to write more documentation around the data flow stuff and, and we'll need to think about um, you know more about how data flows work as we go through this and I'm also going to do a thing I need to do by Friday actually I need to do that tonight uh, actually I'll probably need to do that today but we need to write a uh, I need to write a tutorial on how we do similar to this continuous deployment of data flows, but how we're going to do the whole scraping service with uh, Kubernetes and and thinking about how do you run, how do you like kick off a data flow for each thing to, to gather some data um, in a container and stuff and, and the full deployment. So this is going to be kind of interesting to see how this goes. And, and then hopefully we can also sort of prototype how does the model workflow, like how do we do this with models too? Um, so it should be interesting to see see uh, hopefully hopefully you can get this to like a full deployment because um, I had that we had that one tool um, that was using it at first using DFML at first and then um, now that tool got EOL so I'm hoping we can get it used in this new inner source portal that they're making and and uh, we'll get some you know more feedback from users and stuff and and more implementation experience here. Yeah, this sounds great. Cool. All um, right. I don't know. I don't know if you remember this, but uh, we started off on my GSOC project uh, based on something that had to do with 
for the inner guys from Intel. Oh, uh, yes, yes, those use cases. Um, yeah. Yes, um, you know, that guy, he went on sabbatical, and then I haven't talked to him. So let me go sync with him. That's a good point. So let me go sync with him um, because we have the use cases now. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> let's see. Great. Um, the, thank you for reminding me because I had totally forgotten, you know, where that came from. <laughs> it's been so long. <laughs> it's was... been what? That was like March or something when we started talking about that. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Use cases. Uh, we've completed. I was just curious the other day uh, that uh, how did they react? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I forgot to go sync with him. I've gotten. I'm sorry. I haven't been very active the past couple of weeks. I've been under a lot of pressure to, to. There's been a lot of stuff going on within my group, and so I've gotten all over the place. Um, and now I'm sort of starting to regain a little bit of sanity here. Um, so I'm hoping to be able to refocus and, and get reorganized here. So I'll, I'll go sync with, um, uh, where were these? Um, they were the One API folks, One API. Uh, 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 folks on, I can't remember that guy's name. Folks, uh, now that we have use cases. This is to uh, get feedback. So yeah, I'll get some feedback from them. They might tell me, I, I have no idea because their stuff is very, you know, the one API, one API until there, it's more low level kind of stuff. You know, it's not really user facing we're very user facing, right? Um, yeah. And so, you know, what I told them is this, this is the point of the FFML is right. We can make things more high level because me as somebody who wants to go write a, you know, to, to, imp, to, to use a machine learning model, I don't really necessarily want to go program in data parallel C++, right? <laughs> you know, yeah. I just want to say, you know, train me a model and use it. So I was trying to show them, hey, yeah. you know, we've got these models and we can swap out different ones. And so I think your use cases were perfect for, for what we had talked about at the time. Now, hopefully they're still aligned on that thinking, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but you never know, right? So uh, it, it, either way, I'll get some feedback back from them and uh, and uh, and we'll see you know we'll sort of we'll work towards you know figuring out how we can get more aligned with them is I think that would you know that would help us um, that would help us get some buy-in from from you know what I'm hoping is that the tutorials that you did and stuff would help us get a little more uh, buy-in from the Intel developers for things like Dal for Pi and things like that, you know, various Intel uh, maintained machine learning stuff where they would just implement the DFML model themselves, you know, and maintain that model themselves, right? Um, yeah. Because then they'd see, oh, I don't have to go implement, you know, X way, you know, I, my users immediately get to, to do this, right? And I don't have to, to, yeah, right. There's a lot of stuff they get for free if they just implement the model class, right? So, yeah. cool, cool. Thank you for reminding me. That was a big, <laughs> that was very okay. important reminder there. <laughs> Great. All right. Well, thank you, Hashim. You too. Have a good one. Good talking to you today. Bye. Bye.